show. Queen PR, Chris the B, those wrestling girls, TWG, Black Excellence, making it up for this podcast, bringing up women and wrestling. Let's go. Hey everybody, what's up? We're back. It's your favorite girls, those wrestling girls. It's your girl, Krista B. And Team PR. And today we are here with another series. We know how much we loved our series on Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch. So why not continue it with the one and only queen, Miss Charlotte Flair? So, you know, before we get into this episode, you know, we always have to do our check-ins. So P, how are you feeling today? It has been a day. It's been a day. Uh, it's it's been a day. Um, I'm happy to be here across from your beautiful face. Exact same. And talking about the Queen Charlotte Flair, and you know, January was a heavy month. I it's think heavy. for the wrestling community, a lot of highs, a lot of lows in life in general. So, you know, I'm just grateful. It's super heavy, like. I have this shirt, this sweatshirt on, this hoodie on today. Uh, Black on business, Roy Rose Creations. Make sure y'all follow. It says push Ooh, through. Oh, we love Roy Rose Creations over yes, here. We do. We do. That is fire. It says push through. Um, that. And that's just the message for everybody, not just in wrestling world, just everybody. Like the Mercury and retrograde, it ended yesterday, but Thank God. There, there's residue li- lingering. I, I feel it. Like today has been a day. I had a headache all day. I've I've eaten. I've I'm able to eat today. So I had a headache all day. And it's just like I don't know what's happening. Um I'm nervous about rumble. I don't know if I'll be able to be there with you. Um, but you know, I'm gonna as Peter one five verse seven says, cast all your fears onto the Lord. Mm. Look at me quoting Bible verses. <laughs> But absolutely, like casting all fears upon him, you know, he's it's the fight is his, it's not ours. So okay. but yeah, I have a I have a headache. I just have a headache. I'm just ready for, you know, my headache to go away. I want to I feel my stomach feels really empty. Like I just didn't eat. Mm-hmm. I'm just all messed up right now, but you know, I'm gonna push through. Now we're gonna push through. We're gonna push through. As you I hit up Roy Rose Creation for cause she made our she made our stickers. Yes. She has made our mask. We she love, made, we we love, love it. it. So if you want any custom made, anything custom made, please hit her up. She's a dope, dope entrepreneur. She also sets our designs and stuff up for our church services, our fresh fire services. And she's just the best. Like COVID brought something out of her that's been probably been hindering her. Like, probably been hiding in her before it so shout out to you Takira Roy Rose Creation make sure y'all follow make sure y'all support her because we support black businesses over here we absolutely do we absolutely do um so just some other stuff to get out of the way um by the time we're recording this it would have happened but I do want to shout out Battle Club Pro for their welcome to New York show awesome card um a lot of amazing matches on it but um our good friend sir Sir wilkins is wrestling in his very first match against simon miller and it's been a long time coming and he has a really yeah and um we're really probably i love seeing people in our you know wrestling community like literally making their dreams come true Mm mm-hmm like, you know, Mr. his brother, Mr. Black, with his refereeing, and now Wilkins, you know, literally, he's like, I'm going to do, he was on our fan club stream with you, Krista, and he was like, you know, basically, they're doing a weigh-in, they're doing a press conference, that, you know, he's going to have the entrance, he said, I want to just do everything I've ever always wanted to do, as if I ever became a wrestler, and I'm like, that's so cool that, you it's know, so and I'm so mad that I missed it. I'm so mad because by the time of this recording and by the time all this happens, mm-hmm. I'll be decompressing. Yes. I'll be away. I'll be decompressing. I probably won't even have my laptop with me, so I can't do anything laptop wise. But um, such from and of course it will be live streamed. So or it was live streamed. So the replay yeah. is probably playing right now. 
but yeah, I would have I would have loved to have seen Wilkins debut in his first and what he says is his last match. You know, there's no such thing as retirement. There's no such thing as retirement in wrestling. Like, like stop it's, that. it's for always and forever. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Then now, forever. Then always. now, forever. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it is. I don't know. Let me let us not say that because WWE might want to sit here and try I to make that. You know how that be. be. You know how that be. Be um, but I'm excited about this episode. Um, if you haven't checked out our Alinda Blaze Medusa episode, please check that out. And has a special interview, some women's wrestling Hall of Fame coverage um, in there. So make sure you check it out. And you know we're on Twitch now every week. We're on Twitch. Like we literally are taking over the social media space spaces and platforms because we're on twitch we're on youtube we're on twitter we're on facebook we're on instagram we're on tiktok <laughs> it's just like uh, why aren't you following uh, us at this point like <laughs> i'm so confused right i'm so excited right about so, it before we get into this episode we already know we're about to take a quick little break so please enjoy this ad and then we'll be right hey, back. Hey, what's up, you. y'all? It's your girl, Krista B., one half of those wrestling girls, and we hope that you're enjoying this current episode that we have for you. You know I had to come in here, interject, and plug ourselves real quick. We want to tell you about our merch exclusively on foryourwear.com. That's right. For Your Wear has all the those wrestling girls merch that you want and need, not only for yourself, but for your friends, your family, and your loved ones. We have t-shirts. We have hoodies. We have tank tops. So please go over to foryourwear.com to make sure you get those exclusive merch, those exclusive deals, and tell them that TWG sent you. <laughs> I love I hearing our own music. I know, right? Let me do this for people. I'm always quick to throw up a... Like, <laughs> me too. Can't, can't, like, not... I realize this is my go-to post. Right. Like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta change it up. I can't stick my tongue out on every photo. I need to switch it up. Listen, listen mine's is either hands on the hip or... That's it, like... Yeah. Right? Everybody, so everybody got that pose. It's just so simple. Like, it's simple, it's easy, it's cute, it's universal. That's it. We're all going to do it. That's it. That is it. You ready to jump into the queen? Charlotte Flair? Because you a kind of queen queen. Yes. I love talking about, like, why we are covering, like, certain women because... Like, that's what our platform is for. We're we not interested in the revisionist history. We're interested in giving women a platform that, you know, they don't normally get to talk about them. But there's some women where it's like, you don't really need to explain why we're covering them. And Charlotte Flair is absolutely one of those people where it's like, of course, we're doing an episode on her. But why I wanted to do it now um, was because she has recently come back. She's back. Um, she mm-hmm. took a lot of time off for her wedding and she actually reinvented herself. Like she yeah. has new gear, she has new music, she's a baby face. She's, she's baby now baby. using the hashtag the people's queen. And I, I wanted to kind of talk about that because <laughs> we're kind of, we're, what we're not gonna do, and you know, Charlotte is cool, but what we're not gonna do is take that. There's only one people's anything, and that's this man right here. The Rock, the People's Champ, the Brahma Ball, like mm-hmm. what we, the Great One, like what we're not, like we, you got to come up with something else, Charlotte. Yeah, like and... Jerry Lawler or you would not like The Rock calling himself the King, like so we got to do something else. Like I get it, you want to be back, you back, you want to be a baby face, you want, and I understand that, and I appreciate that. You know, we can see you in a new light, a different light, or whatever. But drop the hashtag. That's it. Yeah, and I, honestly, Charlotte to me will always be a heel. Like I, 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 I can't. And don't get me wrong. Like she's good, 
and there's a reason why like it's like yes we you know we missed you you took the championship off around of rousey we, we wanted that to happen so yes we're all cheering for you now but i feel like at some point like she i would like her to go back to you know the charlotte we all know and love i don't know the one I that know. you know because you're a 16 time like champion mm. you said what say it again okay I, I was just thinking, like, maybe it's time. Like, I don't know. Like, you have so many championships. Like, you're always awarded opportunities. Like, I need you to fight for it more, you know? But then I'm like, hmm. But I also feel like being that she's a, between, a, she's a 14-time or 16-time. No, she's not matching her dad yet. So she's a 14-time women's champion. Mm-hmm. I also feel like now... Yeah, she can fight for it, but she can also be more free with it. Like, she doesn't have to be a right. heel. Like, when she was a heel, like, it's like she was gunning, vicious, this, that, and third. And you saw the actual fight in her. Now it's just like, all right, girl, like, you 14 times yeah. this. Like, you have the most title reigns out of any woman ever in WWE. Like, yeah. 14 times? There, no, There's no other woman. No other woman. And the crazy thing, too, and why I I would get annoyed with all of her championship reigns is, like, it would be, like, she already was, like, a 10, 12-time champion, like, in a five-year span. And it was just, like, to me, that just seems so ridiculous, especially because the women just, right. And I feel like the women's division was just getting to a point where it felt like a real division, like a real wrestling division. And you you literally just dominated everything in such a short amount of time. And it was just like, you know, then it's not, it's not fun to me anymore. But she came to WWE when, I don't know when she became, um, when, when she exactly signed with, um, she signed in 2012. Uh, 2012. She but she didn't even want to be a wrestler. She did not want to be a wrestler. Um, no. She was into volleyball, and I believe she was a gymnast. Um, yeah. She went to school. She she went to college to do two different colleges. Um, ended up graduating with her BA in, um, I think it's a BA or a BS in public, BS in public relations. It is so crazy. Yes. I don't understand how... So... In undergrad, I have a BA, mm-hmm. a Bachelor of Arts in political science, but in grad school, I have a MS, a Master of Science in Journalism. Make mm-hmm. it make sense. Yeah, you, yeah. Wow. You would think it'd be like uh, the other way. Right, the other way around. So for her to, that's what I had to remember for her to, for me to say she has a BS in public relations i'm so confused but either way here you 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 degreed up you got that sister. yeah I, I, that's a shock i did i did not know that i do i do know she is an elite athlete yeah she is an elite became, athlete. um in wrestling and that's why i always give her her props because you know for those who don't know who charlotte flair is she is rick flair's daughter and you know she could easily have gotten a lot of opportunities and you know wrestling is a is a family sport for the most part but at the same time I feel like you do have certain advantages but then you do have certain disadvantages and hurdles that you have to go through that no one else does Mm -hmm. and but she came into the wrestling business like as a stellar athlete on her own so it was like she might be Ric Flair's daughter but as soon as she got in the ring and she explained her athletic ability it's like wait, she absolutely has a place here. Like, you know, it's not just because she's Ric Flair's daughter, but she was always kind of determined. Yeah, true. But she, like you said earlier, like she was never really interested in wrestling. Like, so we already know, like she's been a part of the business technically since she was about like seven, eight. She would appear at WCW with Rick and his vignettes. Um, up until like she was like 11 or something. So something to that effect. Between the ages of seven and 11, She was in WCW. She was a part of Ric Flair and David, David Flair, which is his son, which is half, which is her brother. It's feud. Um, she, she was a part of the feud with Vince Russo, um, and WCW. And then Rick and David would have a retirement match and whoever won that match, of course, the loser would have to retire and also shave their head. So 
Russo tried to come and you know interfere, but then Charlotte, leave it to Vince Ashley, right? Charlotte, whose real name is Ashley, and her little brother or older brother, Reed's the youngest, younger brother Reed. Yeah, Reed's the youngest. I think David's older. Yeah, would interfere in the match, handcuff their brother David so that Rick can win, and then Rick ends up shaving David (laughs) half a day of head. And then that was the last time we seen Charlotte Flair like around the, like the business because you know Rick was really wrestling like that or he was like in other spaces and you know she was girl she was touching preteen and teenage years like she really doing wasn't her own thing. Yeah, doing her own thing. But you know from there you did spot her. She she was spotted a few times. 2004 she was in mm-hmm. she was at the Monday Night Raw where Lita and Trish made history being the first women's main event on Monday Night Raw. Wow. That's when like the universe just like is like you were there, like you were supposed to be there. And right. you know, who knew that Charlotte would end up being a woman making her own, own history and then some. True. True. And yeah. I remember like watching, I think it was table for three. And it was Trish Leader and I think Ivory or somebody. And they was just like they, they brought it up and they talked about, oh, yeah, that was in Charlotte. And Lita was like, I remember it was in Charlotte because Charlotte was there. So Charlotte was in Charlotte watching our match. And I'm just like, oh, wow. yeah, that's dope. And I promise you, it took me a little minute to figure out, like, why her name was, why they named her Charlotte. Yeah, her I, I Coming did. from <laughs> Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm like, oh, God. Come Got on. it. But look at this throwback, like, screenshot. Of Charlotte in WCW oh my with Ric Flair and a part of the storyline. So that's Reed back there. Back there, yeah. And they were in a storyline. And it's I feel like, you know, I compare, I think about wrestling families and like I've been watching Young Rock. And I'm like, being kids of wrestlers, you're either I feel like you're completely separated from the business whatsoever. Like your family is just your its own planet. Or at some point you're gonna get involved somehow. Like all of like the Hart family were in storylines at one point. Like it just I mean, look at Ray and Dominic Mysterio, like it's gonna happen. So even though she never was interested in being a wrestler, it's like you like you're on Nitro, you were like front row at shows. So mm-hmm. you were close to the business. And then, you know, unfortunately, tragically, like her brother Reed was like passionate about following right. Rick Sarah's steps, like maybe to his detriment, but that was his dream. Like he did everything. He went over to Japan. Like he was trying to do everything to be the next, you know, flair to take over the business and then kind of find out that it was really meant for Charlotte. To mm-hmm. Yeah. She, 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 like we said, she really wasn't interested, but you know, Reed persuaded her to, join and you know sign up and do whatever so she ended up signing with um wwe in 2012 in may 2012 and she was still green like she really didn't know people she didn't know move sets she didn't know anything and reed would get so upset at the fact mm. that they want her but you know she didn't know anything he knew everything and right. you know unfortunately his 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 vices caught up to him and um he ended up passing away in March of 2013. And mm. it was from then on, she was just like, you know what? I'm not only going to do this for myself, but I'm going to do this for my brother. I'm going to live out his dream because this is what he would have wanted. Mm. And then July 2013, I believe it was July 2013, she makes her debut on NXT. Wow. And that's not even a long time to train as a wrestler. So right. that even just goes to show you like her athletic ability where she kind of probably picked it up way easier than someone who wasn't like a lifelong volleyball player collegiate athlete like that kind of thing Mm -hmm. and she had the strength that motivation of like I'm not just doing this for myself I'm doing this now for my brother Reed and I always appreciated that about her as well like she took that with her yeah it's it's like when we were watching the, we was talking about the Ric Flair documentary and how he was talking about Reed's death. And, you know, we've all heard the story of Charlotte doing it for her brother, but it was just like, 
she like I feel she I believe she's she said she feels regretful regretful too that because he really wanted it and it's all happening for her but at the same time she knows it's like him guiding her as well like being out with there with her every night and um you know just mm-hmm. just still watching over her while she's in the ring so we I definitely appreciate her doing that for him as well because who knows where it would have gone for Charlotte if Reed was still alive and actually made it in WWE and right. really would have became that next player. We probably yeah. wouldn't even have Charlotte. That is so true. Like, I, it's funny. I came across this article that was like how Reed Flair impacted the women's revolution in WWE. When you think about it, Charlotte was, of course, a huge part of that. And I can't wait to cover that. But, but if she didn't do that, like, would the four horsemen be a thing? Like, would that, you know, that magic happen? If those, because it really was about the universe bringing these four women together. Like, if Charlotte Flair wasn't a part of that picture, then what happens? And honestly, no shade. I just don't think Rick Flair would have, Reed Flair would have achieved the same. I don't think he would have made as much of an impact as either Ric Flair or Charlotte Flair. I'm not saying that he wouldn't have been a successful wrestler. I just feel like to even come close to Ric Flair status is hard enough. And like Charlotte, I feel like being a woman and being, you know, who she is, like she was able to carve that out for herself. So it's like, I don't know. Everything kind of happens for a reason. True. Everything does happen for a reason. Not saying like, like she was meant to be in wrestling is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I agree. I agree. She was definitely meant to be in wrestling. Um, but everything does happen for a reason. And, you know, she debuted at NXT and she also talks about like how cringy it was to like go back and watch her debut and how she was not ready. She was so subconscious. Like she didn't think that she could make it. She didn't, you know. And during her debut, the first person she wrestled was Bailey and won. So she beat Bailey on her the day of her debut, wow. and then her and Bailey will go on to become tag team partners and face off against the BFFs. So um, I think they faced off against the BFFs, Sasha and Summer Rae at the time. Um, wow! And then <laughs> right, and then Bailey, That's she was Charlotte. Would, Charlotte, would, I feel like although, um. Charlotte first turned heel while turning on Bailey after she beat after Charlotte won her match against Santana Garrett. Yep. And and she joined the BFFs and then Summer Ray left. She got called up to the main roster. And she that's when Sasha and Charlotte became tag team partners and they was feuding against Bailey and Natalia. Wow. And then, you know, Summer Ray came back and it was just a whole bunch of put in, put out feuds and stuff or whatever. Yeah. But I feel like we all love the feuds with Charlotte and um, Sasha on yeah. the main roster. We all love those. Like, there's no way that we don't. But their feud really started in NXT. Mm-hmm. It their did. feud really, really started in NXT. But we're going to take a quick, quick break. And then we're going to get into this this NXT feud, the first feud between Sasha, Sasha and Charlotte. What up, it's your boy Blue Magic from the Mixed Tag Show and also older for your wear. Now, I know you've seen the announcement for some of your favorite podcasters, and soon you'll see some of your favorite wrestlers too. I decided to expand my business to be a vendor so people from the wrestling community have more chance to connect with some of their favorites. So check out foryourwear.com and see if your favorite podcaster or wrestler has teamed up with me. If not, let them know they should. Also, if you're looking for a vendor for your merchandise, go ahead and reach out to me at Blue Magic Grind, spell how it sounds. Before you will, F O R U R W E A R. And shout out to those wrestling girls for being one of the first to join me on this journey. The merch is already up, so go ahead and cop that. Period. Shout out to Blue. Shout out to Blue. Make sure y'all follow Blue Magic Grind, Mix Tag, For Your Wear, all that, all that, all that. So, so one thing I do want to talk about before we go into her feuds mm-hmm. is when she was developing like her character and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and how at first you know going back to how hard it is being following in like such big footsteps when you're you know royal wrestling royalty 
is they didn't want her to be, they didn't want her to woo at first. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't want her to be too lean too much into the flair thing. And she came out how everybody comes out or thinks that they should come out with, you know, the whole like, mm, so happy to be here. Kind of vibe. That's so unlike her. Like I look at these photos and I'm just like, that beautiful. You look but like she's be a cullen from Twilight. <laughs> like <laughs> Krista. She's a missing cullen at this point. No, seriously. Like, it's just not her. Like, this photo that we're looking at is from a very early promo shoot. And she's doing the very stereotypical female wrestler pose and smile, blonde hair. Her gear is very, very basic. Basic. And it just doesn't seem like her. And a lot of the women, especially now, their earlier promo photos, like when we did our Charlotte, I mean, our Sasha in our Becky episodes, we went back and looked at those first promo photos. And it's just like, you can tell that they haven't found themselves yet, that they're not like a hundred percent comfortable with, you know, whatever they're presenting, you know, mm -hmm. in this business. And, you know, in that photo, I'm like, that doesn't even sound like Charlotte. And just, I can't even imagine Charlotte Flair without the woo. True. Like, <laughs> to be honest, when I first heard that Ric Flair's daughter, I think I first got wind of Charlotte when everybody kept talking about the legacy match between her and Natalia and oh, Bret yeah. Hart was in Natalia's corner and um, uh, uh, Ric Flair was in Charlotte's corner. And I'm just like, oh, that's oh, so she's going to woo. Like, that's the first <laughs> thing you would expect. She's going to woo. Like, how are you a Flair and you don't woo? Right. Like, you might as well be um, a skunk that don't stink. Like it just doesn't make sense. I was gonna say a bird that can't fly up there. Like, bird imagine, that can fly. like imagine she didn't wear the robe. Like, and or I think didn't strut. Right, and I think what is that? been able to make her own legacy where you don't even really need to mention that she's like Ric Flair's daughter which I will always give her props for and I think she I think me and Brian were talking about it where she's probably the best second generation like wrestler like who was able to make an impact without their family member and I'm sure there's a lot of other examples but I think as far as women and modern day, I think she's probably definitely one of the best that was able to do that. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree with you. Um, so, like you, like you was talking about earlier, she comes to NXT very, very green, not knowing who she is, not knowing what her, her identity or her character or anything was going to be. She has a first match, like I mentioned earlier. She beats Bailey. Um, mm -hmm. Then you know, Han Bailey form a tag team. And I forgot to mention, Charlotte actually gets injured for two months. So after her injury, she comes back. Oh, wow. Yeah, she comes back. She's still with Bailey. No, she comes back after joining the BFFs, comes up with the BFFs. They start um, accompanying her to the ring. And then, like I said, Summer gets called up, and it's her and Sasha against Bailey and Natalia. Uh, and there's some, some bouts back and forth. Charlotte will lose, Natalia will lose, and vice versa. Um, and then um, the B Summer Rae comes back for a short stint, probably like a one episode, comes back, beats up Bailey, and then Emma and Bailey and Paige come. Emma and Paige, a returning Paige, comes to Bailey's rescue. And then fast forward, Summer Rae leaves. Sasha Banks is by herself again with Sir Charlotte. And then Charlotte leaves Sasha Banks to get beat up. And then they will go later on at night, go and on in, um, in their BFF relationship and become enemies. And then this is the start of something. And I so think that's what kicks. I was just going to say, like, that's what, like, kicks everything off. And just some of these names that she feuded with in NXT before even getting to the main roster, like the Summer Rays and, you know, Emma. the four horse women mm -hmm. and Emma mm -hmm. and even Natalia. And so she was getting a lot of 
experience down there. And it was the first time that the women were given like a significant amount of time in the ring Mm -hmm. and their work was what was making that happen. So like the evolution, that's why I always like try to say, or at least in my opinion, that the evolution started in 2013, because I feel like it was when women like Charlotte Flair came to NXT or when Total Divas premiere, like, I think it was like a little seed that was just like being planted for like shit like that. And like Charlotte Flair was like right there in the beginning. Right there in the beginning. So before... <sighs> See, I really, like, we didn't watch NXT, so I feel like now looking, doing all our research and looking back, we were raw, like, we robbed ourselves of some good stuff, some good videos, and now we gotta go back on Peacock. Oh, God. Oh, look at some of of Peacock. (laughs) It's so annoying. So annoying. But Charlotte and Sasha's feud, and I'll say this in every episode, every time it comes up, has to be my favorite feud of all time, especially when they're on the main roster. Like, the, and we're gonna talk about like the false count anywhere match to hell in the cell. Like, they literally made history together. First ever women to dot 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 is stamped by their name multiple times. It's not like it's a one and done. It is multiple times. Yeah, with Charlotte and Sasha and NXT. Like when they would have to cut their promos together, like practice in the back and cut their promos together. Like you just felt that that feud was so real because it was just like. Yep. They are both NXT feel women. like they're the best. Yes. I'm an NXT Women's Champion. That's going to be my championship soon. Da-da-da. Like it was just a good banter going back and forth, back and forth between the two. And I'm just like, damn, I really missed out on this. Like, yeah. I need to go back and to my, 20, in the beginning too. my 23 year old self and be like, girl, watch that. Back. <laughs> Woo, oh my God. God. That was literally, I just, I just realized like that was literally 10 years ago. It was 10 years ago. I need a moment of silence. Jesus. Right. Like, a bitch is getting old. Hello. Oh. So this is one of the, just the standoff alone. So one thing that Ric Flair will always say about Charlotte and Sasha, he would say that Sasha is her steamboat, where it was like, we are wrestling soulmates and we're just going to have the most amazing in-ring chemistry and put on bangers. And as soon as, as early as 10 years ago, they were they had that chemistry and they were putting on bangers and they had a few that felt real and i i feel like they a part of it is like it is real because now we have to prove ourselves i have uh-huh. to prove to you i'm the best i have to prove to you that i'm not just rick flair's daughter sasha banks has to prove that i'm better than rick flair's daughter like you know kind of thing so it was just this hunger that I think everyone felt. And also going back to just being my 23 year old self is I wish I was able to go to a full sale show Mm -hmm. back then. Like when the NXT crowd was like super tight, super small, and it felt very inclusive and it had this magic and everyone knew like something was, was brewing. And now, and that was even with just like Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, but the women are also bringing it. Yeah, I agree. Um, so you were talking about how Charlotte and Sasha had to like really prove themselves aside from being, you know, aside from Charlotte being Ric Flair's daughter or aside from Sasha knowing like that's Ric Flair's daughter. She's genetically superior. Now I have to be her. So they literally put, brought out the best in each other. Like they didn't. And they we would see that best later on where they were both called up. You know, they were both a part of that women's revolution, evolution call up uh, along with Becky Lynch. Mm-hmm. And we would see, like, like I said earlier, like they have the title first ever women to dot, dot, dot multiple times. Like their accolades just keep getting longer and longer. We all know where Sasha ended up. Money. Yeah. Money. Money, money. I love that. I love that. I love that. But for um that feud, 
I think I do remember seeing like that that little clip backstage and they just kind of like it was very much sass and um better. Like that's when that's when you can tell like they started developing their characters. It was in that yeah. moment right yeah. there. Yeah. Um of course they were going to feud with, with each other, but then they were also going to feud with Becky and Bailey, and they would have like that um fatal four-way match for the women's championship. And I believe that's when Sasha won. Um, yeah, and I believe Sasha and Becky t- formed a team. Bailey was doing her own thing, Charlotte was doing her own thing, and they came back, and that's how the four horsewomen were like yeah. solidified, especially by Arn Anderson and Rick yep. Flair. Yeah, like it was that, yeah, they and it's so crazy too because it was they were never a faction as the four horsewomen. But they were clearly the ones that were standing out, and then they got the blessing from the, the original. The original. So, so I mean, it is what it is. <sighs> I, I want to talk about Charlotte Flair as NXT Women's Champion because it's shocking to me because she's had so many championship reigns that she's only been she was only NXT Champion once, but really? she was once? champion I it was like twice. For- Right, yeah. She recently won it in 2019, but she was only champion for once. However, her reign lasted 258 days. That's why. So she was champion for a long time. So she basically knew what it felt to be a champion early on in her career. She held the championship and for a long time. And that's another thing. Like, she's an anomaly. Like, is female or not? You know, not many people enter the business and then two years later they're world champion for almost a year. No, that was that's not almost a year, but it's pretty it's it's pretty pretty long reign. Um, but she feuded with you know all the women that you mentioned for it, but you can still tell like in this time that she hasn't really she's very far, but she's not the queen that we know today. True, and she's not given Cullen in this picture. She's not given like she belongs <laughs> she, in the Cullen family. She she's not. She she just looks real prim. And uh, ooh, okay, oh, no. well, I'm say we on fan club, right? Okay, it's okay. I'm like we're stars, right? Stars. Like, are we manifesting something here? Because I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. Um, but yeah, like her NXT Women's Championship run. Was a good one. Um, I forget who she dropped it to. I think, I think she had lost to Bailey because around this time, so. if I'm not mistaken, she would get called up to main roster with Sasha and um, with Sasha and Becky. But let me make sure because you know we don't like to be sounding crazy on here. All right, or maybe we do because I can't find my notes and my phone. Yo, I don't know what it is with iPhone, but it glitches. I don't glitch. That's what it is. Is they just want you to keep Apple just wants you to keep buying more phones. That's like really just like what it is. But it's crazy because them going to the main roster. Charlotte going to the main roster. It's almost one of those things where it's like, of course she is. Like, if there's anyone, like, yes, it's going to be Charlotte Flair. But at the same time, you know, it's not like she went there with, you know, just anyone. Like, you, she went with Sasha and Becky, who, you know, now, of course, it's easy to say, but, like, all stars in their own right. But she went to the main roster and really made her mark as well. And mm-hmm. kept getting better and better and better and better. So better. she, um, yeah. So she actually lost the championship to um, she lost it to Sasha. Uh, Sasha. Yeah, and that fatal yeah, so she lost it to Sasha. Yeah, and a fatal full way, and <laughs> there was a sign of respect there as well. Yeah, and it, it went right, and it went to and it led to you know all those other like epic matches that they you know they ended up having and that Charlotte ended up having, but 
I really, like you said, like I thought Charlotte was champion more times than that, Mm -hmm. but she was just champion for a long time. But overall, how do you look back now that we're freaking 10 years in? How do you look back? I'm sorry, but it's crazy. How do you look back on, especially now kind of going back, how do you look at Charlotte Flair's time in NXT now? It's definitely one to remember, especially if you was there from the very beginning when NXT, like WWE announced that they were doing the de- developmental and doing the NXT and had these people there. If you was there, excuse me, if you was there during that time, it's definitely one to remember. It's like everybody grew up together at that point. Like they were babies. We were babies watching NXT. Like we all developed, we all grew. And her time there is definitely one to remember. But like I said, I'm going to most remember her for her main roster role, like her being called to the main roster, mm-hmm. her Sasha Bailey, and starting this whole women's evolution. Because somebody had to put the Bellas down. And right. I as much as we love the Bellas. It was time. It was time. It was time. I was sick of my girl Naomi and Paige complaining. It was time. Yeah, it was definitely time. And that was such an exciting time. And I cannot wait to talk about 2015 to kind of the women's evolution. Yeah. Um, and then in part two of this series. But if you are not familiar, and there's a lot of newer fans, again, this was a long time ago. <laughs> so go back, watch some of these 2014, 2013, 2015 matches of the like, Four Horsewomen and Summer Rae and Dana Brooke in NXT because the Emmas and the Pages, because you kind of see that that hunger to get to where we are now. A lot of fans now you see you've seen women in the main event, you've seen two black women main event, but this was before where this was like almost unheard of. The amount of things women accomplished in WWE was unheard of. And this is the time where the seeds are getting planted, the adrenaline is there, like the engine is getting, you know, going. You know, as a women's wrestling fan, go back, watch NXT in those days. Also just watch NXT back in those days. It's just so good. I'm about, to, so start. I'm about to start from the very first episode. Right? Oh my God, Kevin Owens and all of them, like a lot of people um that are on the main roster now or people that kind of didn't really make it on the main roster were really, really good in NXT. So just go back and watch that time because I think you appreciate a lot of what's happening wrestling now if if you did that. Absolutely. I agree. Well, we're ending here because we got part two coming yeah. and we don't want to spoil anything. As always, you can definitely find us everywhere. Those wrestling girls, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Facebook discussion group, YouTube, Twitch, uh, str- um, not stream yard, Lord, YouTube, mm-hmm. Twitch, um, Patreon. That's what I want to say. Patreon. Please make sure you subscribe and follow Help us get to 10,000 followers on Twitter. I, it's driving me crazy. We're it's literally like 50. I'm going to give another, I'm gonna give another number say. update. I'm going to give another number Dude, update. Because it's been fluctuating. I'm like, if we don't get to 10,000 followers, I'm going to like pull my hair out. Yeah, I mean, I'm not pulling <laughs> my hair out because she is just growing that beautiful. I love it. You know, we are now at, oh, we, we went up. Because when I checked the first time, we was like at 9,950. 58 now we at 9,962 so oh that's please, amazing yes can you please like let's go yes, hit that follow button if you know other fans of wrestling especially women's wrestling and they need a podcast they, let them know about those wrestling girls mm-hmm. we have a fantastic community we're always trying to get out there because we also throw events we are we do more stuff on twitch so we definitely want to build that community out and just create more wrestling content and just connect with as many people as we can um yeah i agree and on that note it's your girl krista b and queen pr and we're out of here see you next time yeah. <laughs> queen pr krista b those wrestling girls twg Black excellence, making it up a list. Podcast bringing up women and wrestling. Let's go.